Um, we're not actually going to do an album review. We're just going to do topics. I think it would just improve our communication skills. The week after that, um, I remember Diego saying we might go on a little one-week hiatus just so we can divide divide our clips and... Um... Yeah, just to edit a bit uh, more. All right. <laughs> Welcome back. Hello, my little cuties. <laughs> Tonight, we got a special episode, episode seven of the Polaris Sex podcast. We have Anthrax, Among the Living, a classic album, 1987. It's metal, it's punk, it's hardcore, it's New York. You know what they say. New York. New York City. You know what the best part about this is? What? <laughs> <laughs> The layout's fucked up. 
What do you mean? What Wait, happened to it? I don't see you guys. No, it's because... Is the camera uh, on? Basically, it's because we're in the wrong order. And now, hopefully this should fix it. Oh yeah, turn on your cameras. This should fix it. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Alright. Okay, the camera fixed it. <laughs> you guys... Never mind. Welcome All right. everyone. We're back. From New York. Live from New York. It's Anthrax. <laughs> Scott Ian means it's coming. <laughs> Scott Ian. Scott Ian, what a god. So, how's everybody doing? Uh, I forgot, I forgot um, I'll, I'll let you guys go first. We gotta get the shades because it's metal. <laughs> it's metal. I think now it's just because it's gonna become a staple now. People yeah. are just gonna like make fun of us. Oh yeah, it's those guys that wear the shades. All the, time. <laughs> <laughs> the glasses. It just makes us look like douchebags. <laughs> <laughs> so how's everybody doing? How how are you doing, Justin? How was your week, man? Uh, this was one of the hardest weeks of my fucking life. It was. I did like two twelve-hour shifts from like six, from like five thirty-ish. That's when I met up the guy, met up with my coworker at the office, and then we both took off to our two destinations, and finished at like six. Uh, then I did like a normal eight hour shift on Wednesday and then like a 16 hour shift, uh, Thursday. So, I mean, I'm just, I'm glad it's the weekend because I'm absolutely drained to put it lightly. It's been a fucking, it's, it's been a difficult week. Like this was a much needed, uh, much needed weekend. And especially now that, uh, we're doing the podcast, like, this is like the main motivator to get through the week. It's it's lightened me up a bit, but man, it's been hard. How's your work thing like after this weekend? Is, like, is it the uh, same? Um, Monday to Thursday for 10 hour shifts. Fuck, okay. Yeah, so at least I get Friday off like I did yeah. uh, yesterday, but I mean, it's. It's long. It's it's a lot of laborious work with with cabling and and sometimes being on construction sites and a lot a lot of heavy lifting. So there's times where you know I wish I can go biking, but at the end of my day, I'm exhausted. I I can't do anything. I phys- yeah. I physically cannot bring myself to do things, which is horrible. But I mean that's just that's just the the reality. Shit, man. Yeah. Well, well, we're glad you're here and that you can chill out during the next two yes. hours and you can forget about all that. This is a place of positivity, man. A place of mind, <laughs> mind relaxation. Yeah, uh, I, 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 I think after we, we reviewed that Limp Bizkit album, I don't think this is no longer like a circle of positivity. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? How, how were your guys' weeks? You go, John. How was your week, man? I was pretty laid back. Um, I finished school, so I've been uh, I clean my room a lot, and oh. I've been like <laughs> recording a lot just in my room, um, just wasting time. Well, con- congratulations <laughs> on uh, finishing school, man! Thank you. Uh, for the because you said you were recording, how's it going with that like little mini yeah. label that you're uh, that you're doing like a project for? Yeah, pretty much. I'm done. At the last second, I told the guys, I, I, I told the guy that, that kind of runs the whole thing, I said, hold on, I, I'm not satisfied with the the first draft of the recordings I sent. So there was this late night thing I did where I was up until five in the morning and I was just remixing Ooh. everything. Fuck. And it's not even like like that good of a record. It, it, it's actually really bad. And there's only one song I, <laughs> I, I, um, I really like off it. So I told him, I said, like when you upload this whatever i said just just make sure this specific song is first and i don't care what the order is for the other one is it a compilation than album that, of I... different artists or is it all strictly you oh no uh it's all me but there's one song that i actually wrote like a, like a year ago mm-hmm. and i wrote oh, sure. like uh i found it maybe last week and i was like oh fuck wait i'm i'm gonna re fix this a bit and then i'm gonna put it on but I, I wrote too many songs for it. So my plan is I want to put out kind of, uh, I want to do an album and then I want to do an EP. And then I'm doing another EP. 
under my own name for fun, a split EP um, with Shay from SFM. Oh, oh cool. shit, yeah. So we're planning to do a, a split. And, like a uh, screen so for, a screen for morphine uh, split, or is like Shay, or does yeah. Shay have like a different project? Okay, it's. Oh, SFM. I'm not sure what name he's gonna use for it, but um, it's uh with him essentially. So cool, that's awesome. Oh, that's man. Sick. I can't yeah. wait. It should be like like really jokes. It should be pretty good. Because <laughs> <Well, yeah. laughs> the songs I have are just like like really abominations. Zany, like- Oh shit! <laughs> They're really fucked up. <laughs> the Chernobyl disaster? Like, what do you mean? Yeah, I I can't even explain <laughs> it. It's just so bad. <laughs> are you are Classic. you gonna tell like the label? Are you gonna tell the label that you want to redo the record or? Oh yeah, sorry. Going back to that. Yeah, so <laughs> I redid all the mixes for this song Is that, that originally like. Well, originally it had like eight or nine songs, and I like scrapped four because I've because I've been just like on this thing, and I'm just like writing a bunch of songs. So now there's like sixteen songs. Oh shit! And they're all like remixed, and they're all like weird, and there's shit going in left and right and stuff, like in your ears. It's pretty funny. <laughs> so yeah, sorry. Yo, so I can't wait to hear so that, I, man. <laughs> so I sent them a folder. With all the new stuff and the artwork, and I said, "Okay, this is out of my hands now. It's all in you. I'm done." <laughs> That's all. Here's all that pressure now. Uh, I don't. Yeah. I don't. I don't mean to interrupt, but Diego, is your? Uh, I don't know about you, John, but like on my screen, yeah. like I don't see Diego on my camera. I see him. Yeah, because me, it just shows the uh, two squares loading screen. All right. Well, if anything, okay, yeah. you can uh, load up the stream and you can see me there because. Oh okay, yeah, no problem. Okay. Uh, what What about you, Diego? How was your week, man? Uh, I'm I've been good. I've been uh, I finished school for this semester, so that's uh, that's good. Congrats. I'm starting up uh, summer classes again in like uh, <sighs> two weeks, so that's uh, should be good. But uh, other than that, I'm just happy that I'm done for now. I can focus on more Polaris X stuff, so I'm excited yeah. to be doing that and. Let's fucking get it. <laughs> and the summer courses is just so you can uh the my macaron. <laughs> uh it's just so you can finish earlier, right? Exactly. Like, instead of having yeah. to stay longer. Yeah, by taking summer yeah. classes, I'll hopefully if I pass everything, I'll be graduated by this time next year. Finish school. So, oh, sure. yeah, that's gonna be good. Well, I, I wish you the best of luck, man. Like Thanks, man. Oh, you got Oh wait, are you are you almost finished or you are finished school? No, this time next year the plan is to be finished by this time next year. No, no, but I mean now you're like you're finished your semester? Yeah, I finished my semester, yeah. How did you, how did it go on your exams, guys? <laughs> well, well, that uh, last said it all. I think, I, <laughs> I, think, I think they went well. Actually, I had this one exam where the final project were in uh like it was this thing where you where you get randomly put into a team and then and the teacher actually sent us an email a few hours ago saying that like we forgot to add a part to it so that's funny so that kind of gives a good example of uh, how to find it. i think for all the other classes it's it's going good except for this one <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, let's uh, let's. I don't mean. I'm sorry to like cut off, but like, mm-hmm. let's let's get the let's get a movie because we've already been live for 15 minutes. I don't want to just like, like it's okay, not. Yeah. Oh, how it's not the how's it going podcast, right? So, <laughs> yes, it is <laughs> for now for, for the first 15 minutes at least. But uh, yeah, sorry, well, I saw, time. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I saw in the script that you wrote like a few uh questions like yeah John about so like th- the thrash metal like let's answer a few of those like let's give our let's give our overall thoughts like on Anthrax. How did you guys find like, out in- about this band? Okay, well the way I found out about it is, uh, I remember watching uh the Big Four concert like it's on youtube oh yeah so like the full like the first time they went i forget where it was but it was like a big four concert and that's the first time i ever heard of oh the big four like what the hell is this 
And then, yeah. like, I saw the show, and then I was like, okay, I don't know any of these people. Let's start uh, going through them one by one. And then, uh, yeah, and then I just went on YouTube, uh, typed in their name, and then whatever the first song was that showed up, that's what I played. So for nice, Anthrax, yeah. I'm pretty sure it was Indians. Yeah, so, well, good one too. Yeah, so that that's how I right. uh, discovered them. What about you, John? Uh, probably the same way. I know it was on YouTube, and the first song I heard was probably that the. It wasn't the Indian song. It was a rap song they did. Oh, with uh, it was Public like a rap Enemy. Rock. Bring the noise. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yes, with, yes. Uh, Public yeah, Enemy. So, yeah, yeah. So that was my first exposure to them. But uh, and also I saw them live a few years ago. Um, with Slayer, right? So that was cool. Yeah. 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 So Gene Hoagland was on drums too. I think. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure. I remember in. you yeah. saying that uh, the last time. Who is Gene Hoagland? Was he like a former member of them? Or Gene Hoagland played on like a shit ton of albums, like of theirs or he, other like, he just... No, not really on Anthrax. I know. Uh, I can't really think off the off uh, the back of my head right now, but uh, but yeah, like like he is the guy to play drums. Like okay. he's just the guy. The guy. <laughs> On death album, he played on a death album. I'm, I'm like a hundred percent sure. Oh fuck! Do you, so. do you know which one? He played on symbolic and oh, on thought patterns, individual thought patterns. Okay, so so he's got some pretty complex like great records. drumming. He's got pretty uh, complex yeah. drumming then. Yeah. Yeah. Sweet. That's uh, cool. How Personal. I guess how I uh, was introduced to Anthrax. Like, I already knew about the big four, you know, Metallica, Slayer, Megadeth, and Anthrax. So I already knew the names. Um, but it wasn't, it really all boils down to Guitar Hero for a lot of these bands where uh, on Guitar Hero Warriors of Rock, they had, um, like, the first song I ever heard from them, kind of like, like Diego, was Indians. And, I mean, that that song is, fuck, is, is a beast. Like, I, yeah. I, I really like that song. Um, so, I mean, I, I checked them out a tiny bit more. I, uh, I, I listened to a few songs here and there, like I Am The Law, uh, Making Me Laugh, and their uh, cover of, uh, Antisocial by Trust. And then, uh, well, it's a French band, so I'm gonna say it. <laughs> Antisocial. Antisocial. Da, 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 da. Then, um, no, oh, sorry. That's... <laughs> no, from from France actually. Yes. yes. <laughs> um, <laughs> then I, then I <laughs> then um, I saw I saw Slayer uh, when they came to Place Bell in Laval, and that, I mean that that was I know we t- we said that we said this before, but what a lineup: Testament, Behemoth, uh, Anthrax, Lamb of God, and Slayer. I but know, it was during uh, during anthrax so I, I was like r- i was super excited because they started playing uh caught in a mosh and i was like yeah. you know what let yeah. the i got i got i it would be the most appropriate time to mosh and it would be my first time ever moshing and how ironic and so that made me check them out a bit more i bought state of euphoria then i bought um among the living which we're reviewing and then i also bought uh spreading the disease and nice yeah that came, like, right pretty before. yeah dude it's pr- pretty great album albums i know in the um i'll just say like quick like yeah. the episode we review which which episode was it that we kept making a bunch of scott ian memes it was the megadeth was, one? no 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 it i was think the, it was the megadeth no no, no it was the slayer, slayer. The Slayer was uh, the ten testa- the yeah. ten testament. The ten testaments. <laughs> Scott Ian. Scott Ian. <laughs> Guys, fun fact. We have Scott Ian in the house tonight. All the way from New York. Whoa, he's right here. Holy shit. He <laughs> Scott Ian. Um but like I know we I know we said that who we'd pick out of like the big fort and like who would we play some with? And we said anthrax. I still stand by that choice of like I don't really see them as super huge influential, but like I think we might have like underrated them because they they really are oh, something yeah. special and unique. 
They rip. They do, man. Like I feel I like we really under. Yeah. So is this like the first Anthrax album you listened to? I For listened to the guys? first one when I was getting into the <laughs> album, which wasn't, which isn't. And also, I did check out this album, too, once again, when I was, uh, like, five or, like, maybe a few years ago now. But because I, I remember I found out about the band and I gave all the other bands, you know, like. A chance. Yeah. So I so I got to Anthrax and then I, it didn't really hit with me or, like, I didn't really understand it because they don't sound the same. No, um, they don't. They don't. Okay. I mean, they don't sound like a Metallica, where yeah, like no. using like a more me- melodic Metallica, me- yeah, melodic or like a pure, just straight, heavy thrash like yeah. Slayer. They, they, they. I mean, they did that that rap collaboration, and I feel like I. You said this before, John, uh, in the group chat that they yeah. they show a lot of hardcore influences too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, so I they think really they are, do that like in the best way possible like it's so good it really is yeah I all right agree uh-huh. with all that. Um, do you think out of the big four i feel like this is the most underrated band out of the big four because oh yeah yeah, yeah. You, know, you don't see anybody talking about anthrax like whenever people talk about the big four i feel like they're always the last band to get mentioned it's like yeah. they are I've heard I've heard people when they talk they say the big four they legit say uh, Metallica Slayer Megadeth and I'm like it's not yeah. the big three asshole it's the big <laughs> four you, you, legit they they start with an A like it's the, in alphabetical order this should be the first one technically but I feel like I feel like they are the last one mentioned because I don't feel like they're as influential as the, the their three other um, counterparts. Counter. I don't know if that's the right word to use, but yeah. Yeah, but it, yeah. Yeah, but I I do think, like I said before, I think we really undermined them when we said uh, uh, who like that we'd leave them off, leave them out, and I already liked uh, Anthrax to begin with. I mean, fuck, State of Euphoria is mwah, pr- a really great album. I gotta listen to it to again just to see if there's any flaws I'll notice, like what I did with this one. But I mean, their '80s catalog. Besides the first one, like you said, John, I mean, they're a fucking solid band. Yeah. And even the last album they put out, I um, I forgot what it was called. Um, something with Kings in the title. It was yes. a really good fucking album. Like, out of all the, out of Megadeth, Metallica, Slayer, and Anthrax, the f- big four that uh, released during, like, the late, uh, mid to late, um, 2010s anthrax had like the best last album from those bands mm. for sure like they they really are good and there's some really great talent in here yeah let's get into the hammer uh, right, I'll, it's, I'll... Hammer time. it's hammer time <laughs> ladies and gentlemen All right. it's time for the introduction i didn't come prepared ladies and gentlemen the moment you've all been waiting for, wrapping up the big four album series. It's Anthrax Among the Living. This is The Hammer. I didn't like that one, but fuck it. <laughs> anthrax, motherfucker. This is the Anthrax hand signal. <laughs> it's like the bat signal in the. <laughs> it's, like yeah, it's, it's like a. <laughs> Justin, put it a bit like, closer. Right, put it a bit closer to your camera. Go for it. This one goes out to Scott Ian. Thank you, bro. <laughs> All right. Scott Ian's like, man, I love Malcolm Young. All right. <laughs> what the fuck? It's true. He says that a lot. Really? He always says that. Yeah. From uh, ACDC? Yeah. Anyway, that was a fun fact I uh, yeah. <laughs> I learned about him recently. All right. Uh, I mean, let, let's, All right, get, let's, let's get, get started. It. All right. The Hammer. Track one. Among the Living. Track. Among the, the, the title track itself. Yep. This was a fucking highlight for me. This was... I feel like a lot of the uh, the big four albums that we did that we did review... I mean, all the uh, all the opener songs have been really strong, and to me, this is like 
the this stat I feel like this is like the same level as uh the other as Fight Fire with Fire and Hell Awaits. This was it kinda it kinda showcases what this album's gonna be about. Pure thra- pure thrashy fun, which I feel describes a lot of the riffs. This album for the whole way through is fun. I love it so much. Yeah, it is. Yeah, I got uh, definitely gotta agree with that. I mean this song I feel like it's a bit too close to reality right now because it's based on uh, a Stephen King uh, book called The Stand and Mm -hmm. in that book there's a virus that wipes out most of the population which is is reflected (laughs) in the lyrics right when he says disease disease spreading the disease you know so a a lot of these uh, a lot of the uh, the lyrics on here I feel like they do still they are somewhat still relevant and could be used in like, in like the time we're living, like Among the Living, uh, and NFL, One World, Indians, Imitation of Life. Like I feel like they these lyrics still stand like the the yeah. test of time. Sure, they're not the most creative, but I do think that um, that that I, I I do think that they did a, a a pretty great job reflecting reality on the lyrics. And you can't have lyrics without vocals. What did you guys think about um, what the fuck was his name? Uh, Joe Belladonna, the vocalist. Dude, his vibe is great. It's almost like um, it's like he's acting as he's singing, like he yeah, like a high like, registry. Yeah, it's so cool. Uh, just like his whole vibe, I like. I really love that. But I think this song shouldn't have been the opener. I like the intro though. But I think as yeah, as dude, the rest the of the song, yeah, the intro is great. But I feel like the song that comes after should have definitely been the opener to the oh, album. Uh, caught, yeah, caught, caught in a mosh. Yeah, yeah. yeah mm. I think as like an opener. I, I, that's how I was like when I was listening to it. Uh, I was like, I don't know. I feel like maybe Caught in a Mosh wouldn't be the greatest opener because that one does sound a little more fun. Um, yeah, and a tiny bit more uh, light, light-hearted. I feel like the way like an opener should be kind of like fight fire with fire. And best describes this song yeah. is that you know it has that nice intro, and I mean it pummels. You hear, yeah. and I think yeah. a good driving force for this is the bass. I feel like the bass tone on this. I love, I love how. It's not like just in the background. I feel like it's on par with everything. I could hear the bass. The there whole is way loud through. bass on, yeah. There's not, and I love I love the crunchy and yeah. raunchy tones that it brings. Yeah, and, definitely. I mean, the way the, this track opens up with like the double bass part at the beginning, like you're being you're being punched in the fucking like wake mm. the fuck up. This is anthrax, you know. It's it's it's, 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 it's always just it's a driving force. It's pummeling you yeah. the whole way through, and that solo. I mean, um, the solos on this on these albums on this album, I think for the most part are from decent to great. I feel like this is one of like yeah. the highlight or the highlight of um, one of the highlights uh, solo wise on this album. I find the guitar playing too. I love how it still sounds crunchy, but it does. It's not like a distraction where it's. It, there's still some. There's still a lot of speed and crunch mix, so it doesn't sound like. Um, try, what's the best way to describe it? Uh, oh my god, I, I can't. I can't think of the words. I. I like the guitar tone. I guess. <laughs> there you oh, go. Same. Yeah. Same here. It's so tight sounding. This album tight, has definitely. like no reverb, which is good. Oh. Yeah, well, there's some, but it's not like an overwhelming amount. It's not like Hell Awaits you know? where it was yeah. re- like to quote Diego, yeah. reverb a la max. Yeah, reverb. Yeah. Super, <laughs> but this is this is not. This, the production is really really good. I it's so tight, album. like this band. Yeah, just the way it's mixed, it, it's such a good sound. It's very like fucking. Oh my god. I I don't. I think the production, it, like this opening song, for the most part, represent like. It kind of represents the um, the the pro- the production as a whole. That it's very equally distributed. It doesn't sound like one, like some like some instruments are playing higher than the others for the most part. Um, I mean, to me, this is like 
like I said, th- this is on par with uh, with the other openers from the Big Four that we reviewed. Do you guys have any flaws with this? Uh, with this track with this in song? particular? Yeah, I, I don't. I, I think it's perfect. For me, for some reason, it's one of the songs I I like the least on the whole record. Oh no way! <laughs> yeah, I did. I didn't like. I just I didn't really. I don't know if like I didn't understand it, but I didn't get the same feeling I got from it as I got from some of the other songs on this album. So, like you said, like, Con of Mosh would have been like a more like exciting yeah. opener for you. Yeah, or okay. One World. Cause that song, I mean, like, yo, that song, that song, is a that song. Dude, dude. so, oh, yeah, dude, that song's yeah. fucking awesome. Uh, well, what about you, Diego? What did you find about like uh, the the vocals for the most part? Uh, for the most part, for this track in particular, I thought you know he does this. The vocalist does a really good job throughout, like, you know, this whole track. I mean, that's his vibe. You know, the high register. What we were saying before. Of, yeah. He nails that key, and like he stays like in his playing field. You know, he doesn't try to do anything. He doesn't try to do any death growls. Like he doesn't try to go super yeah. low. Like he stays in his ballpark, and he does a good job. So I feel yeah. like that's that's the best way to describe the vocal performance. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Any other notes for uh, for the first song? Uh, no. Let's uh, let's move on to uh, Karnamash. What John wishes was the opener. This yeah. song, this song was really fun. This song this is, was really yeah. fun. So I love this the. Is a, I, I, yeah, like, go ahead, John. Sorry. Sorry. No, but I, I, I just, I just wanted to say, in terms of the subgenre that this band is in, this is a like iconic song. I mean, it um, is. I think it's. I think on it's Spotify, it's one stuff. of their most played. Good stuff. The I really enjoyed that lead. Um, where there's the, like the one guitar playing one set of notes and then there's another one playing another set of notes and when they're layered on top of each other it sounds like really cool it, it, there there there's there's like a nice lead on this one are you talking about the the solo there yeah now see that that's this is like for me this is when i thought like one of the this is one of the weaker solos i thought it was decent but i didn't think yeah me personally i just i didn't find it that particularly great i wish it was more sh- more shredding yeah um but i mean the riv the inch the intro with the and the kick drum and then and then uh when and then that that crunchy bass kicks in yeah and then when you when you get to the main riff i feel like that's where um i feel like that's where a lot of the hardcore influences like show up like Mm. it kind of reminds me of um Kind of like Scotty Scottyan's uh, other band, Stormtroopers of Death, where it's kind of like a crossover uh, thrash. For those of you who don't know, crossover thrash is basically thrash metal and and hardcore mixed. Um, which even then, thrash is already somewhat influenced by some hardcore, but more so the British wave of heavy metal bands. Like I feel, I feel in the especially a lot of 80s hardcore where they just played fucking fast. I feel like they take that, but not strip it down, but they take it and remove any, like, it sounds more professional. I feel like there's yes. no, like, there's no, like, exactly. a lot of the punk bands where they're just playing random shit and it just, even if there's little faults in it, they'll keep it. I feel like they they take that, they bring it back, and they remove any little faults and it, the riffs, like, just... They True. sound more professional and and way better. Yeah, and it's the perfect mosh song. Yeah, iconic. I'm mo- I exactly. first time moshing to yeah. it. That was that it's was really that song. was my song. So this song it means a lot to me. Yeah, I mean, we, I yes, all right. A little bit. So you did remember... a lead with your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you just like I know this song's like really really important to you because. Uh, it's like the first song oh, you ever no. watched, and it was at the the last concert that that we went together, right at uh, Heavy Montreal. No, and I didn't watch that, that one. It was the first. It was the first time I saw Slayer. Oh okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I remember at that concert too. You uh, you fucking like <laughs> going crazy. You're like crowd served and shit. That was, dude, that was yeah, nuts. dude. I went ham for Slayer, yeah. dude, and and seeing Anthrax perform like a lot of, like, 
like some of the other songs uh, that are here. Yeah, I mean, I went bananas. I, yeah. I think that made me more into a fan. I appreciate them even more. Nice. Yeah, it was cool. really cool. I mean, for, for this song, uh, I, when mm -hmm. I was researching it a bit, it said that uh, like the whole origin of the song is that it was a guitar tech, and like he was in a mosh pit, but like he hurt his back or something. <laughs> And then when the pandemics were treating, oh, pandemics, oh my god, the paramedics. Yeah, were corona treating, among, in, among the living is back. <laughs> when the paramedics were treating him, he was yelling, uh, like, dude, I got caught in a mosh. And then they're like, <sighs> nice, there you go. And that, that's how the, the origin of the song, or from what I researched, of what the, what happened. But overall, like, I really, I really like this song. This is like, a really really good song. This, was this is probably this is like probably the best song of the album for me. It was the the highest rank I gave. Uh, it went to this song. That was score. Nice. So the so like the lyrics deal with. Uh, I mean, it's just it's about being caught in a mosh, right? About moshing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. That's pretty so much. Yeah. I, Would you? Very... Because I remember in the last episode, like John was saying, uh, that you know, like how Metallica, they kind of improved from like their first things about like rocking on the stage. Uh, did, did you find John, did you find uh, John, uh, but that, John, <laughs> did you find that like, the, like the, the lyrics on this, they were kind of yeah. like, like kind of like dumb, like how you sometimes like kind of describe really Kill all? Some, like, uh, I feel on, like on this song specific? Um, I mean, the ain't gonna live my life this way line, that's, I I like the way that they say it, but as a line, it's kind of bad. But I know that they're <laughs> self-aware, so I don't really care. Yeah. Like, it sounds very fun. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really mind it. Yeah. I, I mean, think uh, a lot of 80s bands, yeah. uh, are the, their lyrics aren't the strongest. Sorry for interrupting, Go. Yeah. Oh, I was just gonna say this song is, like, really, really fun to sing along to, especially for someone who's, like, new to, to metal and who's coming in. And like, if you listen to the song first, like you're gonna be singing along by the end, cause the, there's a lot of repetition of the lyrics, and like it's it's just really really fun. It's a really fun song overall, really great. I, I was actually I was actually gonna say that a lot of these choruses, I think almost every chorus here that from looking from the tracks, like they're so catchy. It's it's like yeah. it's like a little yeah. mini earworm. And I and like you said, it's it goes back to some some of the re repetition, and I mean sometimes repetition is good. I mean, there there if it's too repetitive, obviously, then it gets derivative. But with the repetition, it feels like it's like a constant chant, especially during live shows. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's fun to sing along to, like you said. Yeah, I'm gonna get um, into yeah. to the repetition a little bit later, like when we give our final <laughs> thoughts. But for now, let's move on to. Uh... I am the law. I am the law. Am the law. This Dude, is a fucking yeah. iconic about, song from this album too. Talk about an iconic chorus, man. Yeah. This song, I mean, it's, it's about incredible. it's about like the movie uh Judge Dredd. I mean, they even say yeah. Judge Dredd yeah. in the Yo, I feel like this is whenever thrash bands try to go slower and they incorporate a lot of groove, I feel like they should be aiming for this song. Cause that, that, yeah. gro that yeah. groove is just so powerful. It's catchy. It kind of, it's kind of like, Pan it's kind of like Pantera where those were the like nineties Pantera with those grooves, even if they are a bit, a bit slower, I mean, they fucking hit and I love it. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, for those of you who don't know what Judge Dredd is, it's uh, basically it's a comic book superhero who, uh, who basically he he sought out after people who broke the law, and he had like bionic eyes, and that made him. And from the research that I did on Wikipedia, it was like an excellent <laughs> marksman. <laughs> that that's what, it basically gave him twenty twenty vision. Uh, like 21, 20. 21 20 21 yeah and he had like good vision at I night am. so that's basically what judge dread is but uh i mean this song like when when you listen to it for the first time or when i listen to it for the first time in my head i just picture cops eating donuts in a car 
and the song is just fucking playing. And they're like, yeah, this I'm is, this is a... <laughs> I'm a fuck. This is, this is like what cops get, like, their power trip. This is what they, they imagine themselves as Judge Dredd. But like you said, they're just like some fat pigs yeah. eating donuts. Yeah, there's two scenarios yeah. where you, when you play the song if you're a cop. Either when you're eating donuts or when you just graduate from school to become a cop. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I feel like that's when cops are on, like, their shit, you know? Like, ugh, like, I'm so entitled. <laughs> I'm so entitled. You know, time it's to, like, like time you're right out of school. Brutality. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I'm young, I'm fun, and I'm gonna beat you up, man. I'm, I am the law. I did all this training. <laughs> Yeah, I did all this training and it's not gonna go to waste and you're gonna be the butt of the joke. <laughs> Cops need to calm the fuck down. Man. I think <laughs> they need to yeah, calm the fuck down. My 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 favorite part of the song is the second half because it like picks up and it's fucking. Yeah, it's more yeah. Yo, I it's, I, like, like, I love at first I didn't do. like it. Wait, I, we're all talking at once. to go, oh, John. Sorry. <laughs> No, I would say, like, the, the first few times I went through it, I didn't like how... Because I felt like two songs being shoved together. But after a while, I felt like the first half of the song, it kind of hyped up what was to come. And then by the second half, it's just like, you know, it, it's kind of like doing what Anthrax does really, really well. And uh, I feel like on, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. on this song especially, it's, uh, it's fucking iconic Anthrax. Yeah. So. I, f I, f I felt like the... Because um, how you said like you felt like it was two different songs... At first, like I, I didn't really feel like that that way. I felt like for the most part, a lot of the songs when they, when they switch to different segments, different tempos, or different dynamics, I felt like, I felt like for the most part it was pretty smooth. I felt like the transition yeah. into uh, into the speedy parts were, were, um, I, I I thought they were pretty seamless for the most part. Hmm. And the solo I feel here. I felt like it was better than Con and Amash, but it wasn't the most spectacular. But I do love the, and then the 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 notes just keep getting higher. I love that, and I feel like this also shows um, that for the vocals, how he puts a bit more bark to it, but still keeping that high registry that, uh, that he has. I, the vocals for me were, were like a highlight of this album. In fact, like yeah. if we're talking about th through the big four, like, I think this might be out of the, out of the big four. This might be like my second favorite vocalist. Like seriously. Who's, who's your first? I think it's gotta be Tom Araya. I'm a little yeah, bit biased because yeah, I love Slayer, but I love that just shouting delivery he has. But yeah, I think the best way to describe Anthrax is if you take the vocalist from like a new wave British heavy metal band, because uh, like you know Bruce Dickinson and Judas Priest they had higher vocal yeah. registries, and then you put them in like you take that band like that British band, you speed it up and you add more punk. That's it's like it's a beautiful concoction of uh, of different styles, and yeah. I feel like it meshes pretty well. Yeah, I mean, you take I, some metal, some you put it in NYC, you mix it up, New York, you put some rap inside, you got anthrax. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, the the, the, be, the best flavor of hardcore is honestly New New York bands. I feel like they do it the best, whether it's Madball, Incendiary, or Marauder. Um, I wish more hardcore bands sounded. Like Anthrax, <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. I feel like that you, you, I really you guys, like love how it sounds. It's just like so tight. I feel yeah. like you guys might like more crossover thrash if that's the case, because they they show yeah, they show yeah, a lot yeah. more of that. Because hardcore is strictly like. I know, yeah. Strictly hardcore, but crossover. I think you guys would like the that flavor a lot more. That subgenre yeah. of a subgenre. Yeah. Uh, Let's uh, move on to uh, NFL. Best yeah. song on the record. Yeah, this song is like up there. It's really, really this cool. Great. This song, uh, what's really cool about this song is the title. It's uh, Nine Fucking Lives written backwards. Oh, that's oh, what that is? Like, for years, I've been... It's, it's, Ni like, it's you... not nine. Nice. Nice yeah, fucking yeah. life written backwards. That's what it is. Oh, I've been oh, wondering what it's for fuck, years. Yeah. Oh, I... I thought it was some, like, monster name. <laughs> Dude, with, I was like, like what? NFL I... in practice. <laughs> Dude, I was like, what the fuck is an Ifnekupesin? I was like, 
I'm not gonna fucking. That sounds like I just like I just did a fucking Lovecraftian spell and just summoned Cthulhu or some shit. <laughs> the call. Of yeah. Eve. Um, but this is Einstein. Yeah, but this is it's nice, nice fucking life backwards. And uh, what's cool about this song? This is a tribute song. Oh my god, Shang. This is a tribute song to a comedian called uh, John Belushi. And, uh, oh yeah, man. holy shit. Like John Belushi, that sounds familiar. I gotta s- keep talking, I'm gonna yeah. search that up. And, uh, I mean, he I, was the king. And when I was doing so, like, more research, he for, said that, uh, uh like, it was, he was a captain uh, of uh, his high school football team. So that's the NFL <laughs> reference. Ah. Uh, so, well, I, th- I was like, for the longest time, I was like, what the fuck does it have to do with the National Football yeah, League? So it's, <laughs> it's like a nice little um, circle where it connects. There's all these dots that connect, and like it's really, I guess, tight, right? So how how do, how do the lyrics connect to how connect to uh to the the actor? Because to me, the whole time it sounds like it's it sounds like it's about like a guy who's just been lying his whole life, and and um and he's been taking advantage of people, and then he realizes later on that you know ca- that karma's a bitch, and it hits him in the face. That's what I understood from the lyrics. How does it connect to the actor? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> I kn- I know a few things about him though. Like he was yeah. a, like he was a mess. Like just oh. fucked up all the time. Oh yeah. Okay. So really? that that makes sense then. Maybe that. Yeah. Because yeah. Um, I think this is the first song that I do. Like I like the song. I do. I like the riff, the solo. Like I said, it was just decent. But I I really like the riff, uh, and uh, and the beginning parts. Yeah. Um, my biggest and even the vocals is fine. Everything's fine. I don't like the bass tone on this. To me, it just I, sound, I think I know what it. Yeah. No. Go. Sorry. It, sorry. Is it just? It sounds like I'll just say it quick. My apologies. Uh, no. No. Go. It sounds like the bass is not put in properly and it just sounds like he's just it just sounds like rattling it doesn't yeah and like it doesn't sound like there's a bass line or bass riffing it just sounds like blank 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 like a yeah. metal string rattling it doesn't like to me that was the most distracting part of the song because i'm like this sounds so fucking cool i love the the force of the um of of the drums and the vocals yeah. and yeah the chorus too um with, with the the chanting i feel like that's another aspect of the hardcore part is a lot of uh, punk bands have that ga- that gang shouting in their choruses yeah, exactly. and i mean with the nfl and and like we said before the i am the law um yeah. law. <laughs> uh, i felt like i felt like though it was it was such a killer song the only thing that fucking ruins it for me is the bass. It was so distracting. Yeah. I, I, mean, I yeah, noticed I was, that too. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead, John. No, I just want to say the bass on this album is at a nice spot, but I know the bass player, he uses his like hands his to fingers. play. Yeah, so I think there's like... That's kind of how it sounds yeah. like, right? Because he's kind of... No, but so, it, uh, but on like Kana Mosh, when uh, you hear, gung, 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 I mean, it sounds yeah. like a bass. It just sounds raunchy and crunchy. Yeah. This, I mean, it sounds like it just sounds like rattling. And I'm like, what happened to it? I mean, I yeah. think sometimes during the chorus, it sounds way tighter. It sounds like so it actually does sound somewhat like a bass. But then for the most part, like I said, it just sounds like rattling. It doesn't sound good at all. Well, what did you find about it? What were you gonna say, uh, Diego? I was gonna so say, right, I didn't even notice the base of what the hell you're talking about. So I was just, I guess, I was so caught up in like the the chorus or the vocals that like I, mm-hmm. it's it's a really good song to sing along to, and like I love the the lead thing that the that the guitar does at the end of the riff, like it's Ooh. yeah, yeah, like yeah. it's this is a really like good song, like. I, yeah, that, that's, that, that's all I wanted to say is that I don't know what the hell you're talking about with the bass. <laughs> <laughs> well, you 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 hear it, John, right? Like some sometimes. Crazy. For me, it's no, it's not that annoying. It's just because I I'm kind of used to that sound because sometimes like I hear 
a song and I noticed that and all it tells all it like all that goes in my brain is like oh the bass player is not using a pick like that's all that goes through my brain I'm I'm just like as like as long as I could hear a note of some kind then I don't really care I mean as long as the bass player is not just like fucking Sloppy, like just like random sounds yeah. with his bass, you know. Then it's like, fucking I don't really care. Chris Benoit-ing his fucking bass. <laughs> um, I don't see I that's the thing. Word. I couldn't tell you, I couldn't tell you a fucking a riff from it, like for the bass yeah. part. Like, I feel like that was the worst part. I feel like Diego thinks I'm a fucking psychopath <laughs> or like I'm crazy, but legit, like if you read, I don't know, it's not that bad for me though. Like, I enjoy it. I don't know. I, I. I do like the song as a whole, but I feel like the bass for me just ruins it. That's the only part. Because I feel like the drum and the vocals, like Diego said, uh, great great combination there. They, they Definitely some of the strongest part on the song. Yeah, I feel like uh, maybe that overshadowed the bass for me and I didn't even notice it. So that's probably why. If I go, if I go re-listen to it right now and like I just focus on the bass, then I'll probably notice what you're talking about. But... I just, do, I never do it after. It. I think think of that in mind. Just listen to the bass. You'll just hear bang, 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 bang. Like you can't tell there's a riff. Like any there's a bass line there. All right. Overall though, I do like the song. Just the bass, I could do without. All right. Let's move on to skeletons in the closet. <laughs> okay. This song. This guy's. Uh, this should have stayed I in the actually... closet. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, I actually yeah. wrote all the words for this song when I was like, uh, I think when I was like four years old or something. What? When you were four? <laughs> what? <laughs> Bro, like, what, are the lyrics? what did you write? Saying, like, I wrote all the lyrics. <laughs> like... <laughs> I wrote all, 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 I just wrote it, dude. No. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't know, dude, I find to that me, hard to this... believe, honestly. <laughs> dude, I'm uh... telling you. <laughs> A baby felt, wrote this song. <laughs> it felt like the <laughs> chorus. The chorus was the strongest part, and I think the second half of the solo. Other than that, dude, I felt like another memorable part from the song was uh, that little. Le- it's like less than ten seconds towards the end. That chung chung chung. That chugging uh, yeah. guitar part, and then it just continues. Um, this I felt like this song for the most part was forgettable. I felt like. The riff was kind of boring. It just sounded very repetitive with the and then with Slido did it and then yeah, like I thought it was cool like for a little bit, but then after a while I was like, oh my god, so fucking boring. Like I just want to skip it. And I even I to be honest, the vocal the the vocal melody for before the chorus, um, I felt like that one just it 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 was pretty weak. What did you find about what did you find about the song as a whole, Diego? Because I, I I feel like you're gonna say some right. positive shit about yeah, it. Yeah, I am. I am because the <laughs> song. Uh, after when I was listening to it, the song made me laugh like crazy. First of all, because it's just so ridiculous. Yeah. So I, I, how can you not hate something that makes you laugh? I don't know, but that's that's me. So, and I feel like, uh, hang on, I'm just fucking reading what I wrote because I forget how the song goes. But <laughs> I just remember laughing, and oh yeah, the vocal lines when he's going, uh, and the skeleton, and then the backing vocals come in and they go hiding in the closet, like, <laughs> like that's Ooh. that's present throughout the whole album of just uh, like the backing vocals, like take a yeah, like, they say the name of the song, and then the lead vocals like stretches out a word, and then boom, it's like it's. That formula throughout this whole album like works for me. I don't know what it is, but it gets you pumped yeah. and it gets you singing. And the drums in the song yeah. too, like they're really like a driving force, and they really it Agreed. really keeps Agreed. your head banging and into it. Because I feel like uh, without this drum beat, this specific drum beat that goes along with this song, uh, it just it wouldn't have the same punch. I just read some of the lyrics. Um... It's it's nothing like it starts off at first like because I'm reading it it starts off like it could have an interesting all American and evil game of extortion a sick old man who would guess he was once SS a deadly fascination of a madman solution six million dead poison tails pollute his head 
I mean, you know, it's not, it sounds like they're going to be talking about someone who used to be a Nazi, part of the uh, the SS force. Let me let me just expand and... on that for a second. Hang on, because uh, this song is based off uh, another Stephen King book, and that book it's called uh, Apt Pupil, and it tells a story of a boy who meets a Nazi during World War Two. And the boy suddenly has a desire to kill and has nightmares when he isn't killing. So, oh, and shit. what's fun, what's funny about this song is that the lawyers and Anthrax, uh, the the record label, or if they got paranoid about getting sued by Stephen King for the lyrics, and they actually really? called him uh, for the lyrics and asked if, like, oh, is it okay if we use it? And Stephen King was like, yeah, yeah, I'm a big fan of Anthrax. You, you can, you can ah. use it. Oh. Dude, so Stephen nice. King seems like he's a cool nice. guy. Man. So uh, <laughs> that to me, when I read that, I was like, whoa, that's, that's fucking sick. sick. So, but yeah. I don't know, like, I feel like the, the first verse sounds really cool. And then... I don't know. Uh, like, they, they are... Uh, like, they are, they are a bit... They're okay, but it's just, to me, it's like, it's not as... I see what like what you're talking about when he says nightmares turn into wet dreams, hatred lives boiling inside. Like I feel like it's okay, but I feel like I don't know. I just felt I was really iffy on this song. Uh, definitely not my favorite. Yeah. I mean, if... it, it has a cool concept. I wish it was just a little more fleshed out. Yeah. Just to just to close this song out, like if if you read the songs like a poetry. Like, it's definitely a different vibe than if you're just sitting back and just listening to it, like... Yeah. I mean, I'm just... Yeah. <laughs> so... Yo, guys, yeah, here's but that, an anthrax I'd have to be I'd have to be passively listening to it to just, like, yeah. I'm hearing the song. Like, since we are reviewing, I do have to be critical of everything. Yeah, so I do have to read yeah. it out. Well, what were you going to say? Here's every Anthrax song? Oh, I was going to say... Yeah, because you, Diego, you brought up how... The way they organize, like, you know, who sings what, and I was like, that makes perfect sense because every single Anthrax song is like, going to the toilet, gotta take a shit, take a shit, take a shit, gotta yeah. take a shit. <laughs> yeah, that's, how like, it that's is. the formula. You know, it's <laughs> extend the word, punch, with the backing vocals. Yes. Extend the word, punch. That's so true. You know? But, so, like, they do it so good. I mean, yeah, it's, it's, I mean, and they, like, they kill it. Stuff. Yeah. And I okay, just I, 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 yeah. Oh, sorry. I, I just want to say, like, I am rereading them. I do see that there there is a bit more detail in them. So yeah. I do I, I think I think the concept's pretty cool and some of the lines are my favorite line is the nightmares turn into wet dreams. Um ooh. Where I sh- like ooh sexy. Yeah. But it does reflect <laughs> like Shake. It does Shake reflect it like uh it does reflect like what you said, how his desire like he just ends up desiring to kill. Yeah. So it is a cool concept, but I do feel like the instrumentation itself is very lacking. Yeah. All right. Let's yeah. uh, let's move on to the next song, Indians. Indians. This was like a highlight. Come on, man. This was an like Iron Maiden might be song, but uh, it's an iconic song. Man, I don't really see Iron Iron Maiden. Dude, in those in those leads. Oh, the like, leads. Yeah, but I yeah, thought the riff like, in general. All the man. harmonies. It's so like it's... fucking Iron Maiden. It's ridiculous. Yeah, this song like the fucking but, uh... the the floor tom drum beat and with the yeah, fucking the china symbol like it's fucking great like, it doesn't what get a chorus yeah so good. <laughs> so good i feel i feel like the lyrics too are are like a, a are, are pretty strong talking about the Na- native americans like getting their land stolen yeah. and mm-hmm. and just the treat the treatment of them overall uh, like he said, uh, respect is something that you earn. Our Indian brothers getting burned. Original Americans turned into second-class citizens. That is, I mean, still to this day in Canada, there's like there's a pretty big problem with uh, with native treatment, and I feel like this is another example of like their lyrics still being, I think, very 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 relevant today. So I commend them a lot for that. The mm-hmm. Let's let's talk about. I, I feel like this is more of a a question for um for for Diego because it's considering like the uh, that that amazing drum intro. Yeah. Uh, do, do, a lot of the uh, techniques. Do do you re, do you recognize a lot of the techniques he's using yeah. in, in these songs? Like, yeah. what are some very like 
noteworthy ones that he uh, does use. Dude, Charlie. Like, especially like at the beginning. Like if you put like if you make a list of like iconic drum beats, this has to be on there. Like mm. hands down. As for techniques, uh yes. <laughs> I don't fucking know. I just play the song and then that's it. Okay, well, I, never watch. Yeah, scrap, but scrap that uh, question. Ter- you had but- more to say about Limp Biscuits drumming than Anthrax. Fuck you. <laughs> oh, oh he's sure using Ghost think- Ghost. You can't even say shit about Anthrax. Fuck off. I think that at face value, yeah. I mean, I don't know. Cause, like, to be honest, like, I don't fucking. I'm done. <laughs> To be honest, I don't fucking know, like, techniques. Like, the only technique I know is, like, fucking, what, double bass and, like, ghost notes and, like, double strokes and, like, paradiddles and, like, that's it. But, like, if I hear, like, a double stroke or, like, a par- like, I can't really tell the difference to me. Because okay. if you're a good drummer, like, you're not gonna be able to know what the difference is unless you're actually, like, playing the song. And, and w- to me, when I play the song, I just do it unconsciously. I don't even recognize, like... Oh, this is now I'm gonna go for a paradiddle and this is gonna play your beat. Like, bro, unless you're doing a drum cover on like a lesson, okay, now it's right, left, right, right, left, left, right, left, left, left. Like, no, like, <laughs> so, yeah, like for that reason, like, I can't really give more in depth analysis because my knowledge isn't that, uh, okay, expanding, if you will, but. <laughs> The, the only hey, things I, that I can say is, like, okay, what I like and, like, what I didn't really like. And w- what I didn't like was uh, nothing, because I like the drumming in this song, and the whole album was really good. So it's, the drumming it's for me is The drumming for me is, like, a highlight. I feel like it's never... There... I don't... I think I... I think that... I think I only had, like... W- one problem with the drumming and that was for like five seconds other than that i feel like even then i feel like the drums are never a letdown they they don't ever hold back the hold back the um the song the song and band in total and i feel like it's always just a driving force and dude what's his name charlie benante yeah top tier fucking thrash yeah. drummer yeah. Mm-hmm. easy easy That's like dumb. this I feel like even even now, like if you see him live, like like we did, um, you'll still see his drumming still holds up. His, his he's not large. His te- yeah, dude. I was gonna yeah. say like, <laughs> Lars, yeah. even your Lars is gone, bro. He's yeah. like, dude, <laughs> dude, why why is it, why has he become so much so shit? Like I get I get. Like, before you say, oh, well, like, he can't play Battery because it's too fast. And it's like, bro, he dumbs down, like, so many other songs. How is yeah. it that, like, all I, these I other guys can still play? Like, he simplifies a lot of his stuff, and I'm like, okay. But all That's these guys that are around the same age or whatever, how is it that yeah. can still... If Neil Perk can still... Fu- well, yeah. rest in peace. But if he could have still fucking played his songs... That's it. Lars can, okay? He doesn't yeah. need to dumb it down. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Maybe he, just, uh, he doesn't have time to fucking, like, oh, I played that. And, like, he, he doesn't care. Like, he's the most successful yeah, drummer on the planet. True. Like, he doesn't give a fuck about what people think. He's too busy uh, and... suing Napster. Yeah. <laughs> Lars is like, yeah, so, um, you know, I'm starting this podcast. Um, <laughs> um, um. Yeah, so Apple like, Music. Um... I don't have time to fucking drum, James. okay, James? <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> the well, since Dale could ask me about, I couldn't answer you about drum technique. The, John, what, what, what were what and then were he some, fucking uh, drums like this. <laughs> yeah. yeah, with his stupid fucking face, like he's gonna but, catch a dick in his throat or something. Like, on me the side, I fucking love Lars. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But, I mean, you hate him yeah, and you, you love him, like. But uh, yeah. we're talking about Anthrax now, so. Yeah, uh, get, getting yeah. back to. Uh, oh yeah. Lower <laughs> things, uh, since Diego couldn't answer me about drum techniques, did, did you, uh, John? Yeah. Fuck off. The drum techniques. <laughs> the double uh, no, bass. But, no, no, no. Like um, oh. guitar techniques. Were there any like really special points that stood out to you? No, or? nothing out of the ordinary going on here. Um, I I felt like it was very professional, and I felt yeah. like the guitar playing mixed with the hardcore um, yeah. parts, like those were ve- like very special to the band. Yeah. But I felt like there weren't incredible techniques. Yeah, being used. Uh, one thing I noticed vibe. is all of the lead 
they're not too like a lot of the bands at this time were kind of playing their leads very fast and doing a bunch of crazy shit and all they slow it down yeah that's not really in their thing they they don't really write their leads that way which i which i thought was uh kind of like an interesting thing they do slow it down, add a bit more melody. I feel like maybe yeah. that's why I didn't find the solos as amazing. Was just because I'm so used to like, yeah, thrash is being shredderific. But I mean, exactly. on this song, Indians themselves uh, itself. I mean, there's a there's a lot of amazing shredding that uh, yeah, that that I th- that I think is like, is another highlight of the song. I got nothing negative to say about the song. It's perfect. Oh, oh yeah, same here. Yeah. All right. Let's. Uh, I was just writing shit down. All right. Let's. Uh, let's move on to one word. One word. One word. This was a highlight. Three minds, six balls. <laughs> Ascension. Ascension. <laughs> Ascension. Hey. <laughs> Dude. Dude, I feel like. Goes up. <laughs> <laughs> um. This song, I felt like. Um, this, this song, in okay, I this song is fucking kick ass. It's a power butt chugger. That's what I wrote. <laughs> what? What the fuck does that even mean? It, it means it's it's just like full force, like fucking like butt chugging riffs. Like it's just it's just full force, dude. I felt like the hev- the heaviest song was Skeleton in the Closet, but I felt like One World had a more tighter and way more bolder performance and all as it just felt like it was constantly pushing um so yeah i do feel like it, it was like the tightest and boldest song and i mean That's i feel like the, the the solo too i really fucking enjoyed mm. yeah 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 i mean for me uh one world this is like uh, wayne's world <laughs> 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 this, I really like uh, like the ride symbol use, and uh, when he goes one world, don't abuse it. When he gets to that part, there's like the ride symbol that shows up, like that use, and he j- he doesn't stay on it for a long time. He just goes on it for a few measures, and then gets back into whatever he's doing. It's like it's just enough. It's like perfect. Dude, this is this is like the song that I played the most. Like, I really fucking like this. This was, like I said, as bold as it was, it was, it, it didn't let up on any of the fun factor. Like, all, the, all these all these songs, except for Skeleton in the Closet, I felt like it was fun the whole way through. I never got bored of it. And I One World was one that I kept, that I kept coming back to. Mm. Yeah. I, I fucking love this one. This one might be my favorite. Now I'm at a bit of a crossroads here i think this one might be my favorite too spoiler alert but yeah this one might be my favorite it's just Legit. so good like i feel like this this has an opening track too yeah would have been this, really cool, this would be good this would know, yeah. i like this like, better i like this like better than i like this better than when you said calling a mosh would be a good opener i think one world would mm. be a perfect one one world would be one good opener <laughs> <laughs> I like the part one where it goes, uh, one, two, three, four, die. <laughs> like, that part's really cool. Like, it's 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 another fun song to sing along to. It's, again, it's that formula yeah. of just fucking heartbeat, punch you in the nutsack, fuck you up song. That's it. This this one had, uh, had uh, gang shouts in it too, right? I could be wrong. Was there gang shouts in it? Uh, like, the whole band sh- I don't remember... Ah oh, fuck! I, didn't, I wrote that the song structure was uh, like similar to other songs. Uh, I mean, when oh, when uh, it goes one world, don't abuse it. One world, like like after that, like I'm pretty sure there's a. That that was a that was like a really fun vocal melody. Yeah. Um, it's good you brought up the structure because what did you guys find find that? Because when we talked about Limp Bizkit, John, you said that like. It was like for every song, it was like the same thing: atmospheric riff, then just heavy new metal. Did you feel yes. like Anthrax on this album? Did you feel like they just they copied way too much, like on, on like side A uh, compared to like the from only... yeah yeah I I know you're yeah the 
this isn't even really an issue for me because I think they're an actual good band. But yeah, the way the guy who sings, though, the way he says each line, sometimes I see it being like I see all the seeds of it being planted in some of the other songs or whatever. And so I feel like to really understand this album, you have to just listen to it a lot and just kind of like remember everything very well because it's very easy for somebody, especially who hears this for the first time, they're going to be like fucking lost uh, because some of the hooks, I mean, the hooks don't sound the same, but when the dude who sings, it's like a lot of the lines, I feel like you could interchange them with some of the other songs too. Yeah. But, I feel like he um, also, he yeah. also stayed, as much as I love uh, the vocalist, I feel like maybe he stays too much in the higher registry. Obviously, that's maybe that's maybe yeah. how his voice is, yeah. but I feel like maybe he stays too much in there. It'd be nice to see him uh, change a little bit of variety yeah. with the uh, um, w- with the vocals. But yeah. I still think it's like it's a strong point. Yeah, and that brings us to hor- the horror of it all, where as a first time listener, A-L- ADI, yeah, 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 and. As a first-time listener of the whole album, because I again, like, I never listened to albums uh, in full, <laughs> which I'm like, all right, come at me, bro. But, <laughs> but listening to the song by by this point, these last two songs sounded the exact same to me. I just I got completely lost. No. It sounds like a wall of sound, even though each instrument is doing each its own thing. It sounds too consistent with the rest of the album that like by this point your brain it just turns to mush and you're just like yeah. uh, okay it sounds yeah. the song sounds the same as all the other ones and this is uh, these last two songs are the weak points of the album for me personally i want to uh, say this song is just very like there's not a lot of songs on this album but it's almost like an hour long i feel like they could have like cut this song minutes. down yeah yeah like they could have just no, I made this song that long. It's like eight minutes or something. It, uh, it's well, in the back of the album it says seven forty nine, but I think okay. like maybe what might help like if you picture the first half, ADI the acoustic part as its own yeah. separate song, and then you look yeah, then yeah. you take horror of it all as its own separate song. Maybe that's why because it it is one song. It is one song. I mean, yeah, it's ADI it's kinda... slash. But I feel like if you picture it as maybe two separate songs, it might feel a lot less monotonous. Um, yeah. I think me the uh, the acoustic parts. I feel like it's it's a nice break from the album. Like like we yeah. said before, like they do copy a bit of the same structure. This was a nice little change of pace, and I think it's like once it hits like what like the two and a half minute mark, it's all instrumental. To me, I didn't. I saw the time and I was going to be like, this song, I personally like this song. I really do. Um, I thought this song was, I looked at it, the t- the length, like seven minutes and 49 seconds. This is going to be a doozy. Yeah. But, so, but as I continue listening to it, um, before the vocals even first show up, I thought it was an instrumental. And it didn't sound, I was like, if this is an instrumental, this is fucking exciting. Like I, I didn't get... I didn't get bored of it. I was rocking with it the whole time. And then I like the force that the vocals come in with. And um, I feel like, I feel like the uh, an- this is another great solo. I, I love the shredding on this. There's some. I feel like there's some tapping on this that just sounds fucking magnificent. Um, and I mean this this talks about the hor- the horrors of life. And I feel I feel like I already said this, but like the lyrics. I mean. They hit it pretty spot on. Maybe not like the most. It's not written like fucking professional Shakespearean or whatever. But I do feel like they did capture eight, 80s life in about you know when they were in the Cold War and just the Reagan era, and how it still transcends time and we can still relate to it. I feel like that that's a really good point. What did you guys find like the most boring about it? Because you guys um, seem pretty negative about it. Yeah, did you find it was just too repetitive, or because you wanted to bring up the rep- rep- repetition? Yeah, the song was just forgettable for me. Like I, I didn't. I like every time I had to re-listen to it. I I was remembering the songs. I was like, oh, what the hell? What is what is this song again? 
And then I have to keep yeah. listening to it to try to remember it. But every time we listen to it, I just forget about it. And by like finally like the tenth time I we listen to it, uh, the only part I remember is like the fast bass part at the end. Like the fast. Uh, that was the, the only. That was the only part you remember from yeah, it. Yeah, everything else like before that, like uh, complete wall, like just mush. Damn. For me, I need to spend more time with this. Um, but uh, I, I, I thought the intro, I could have lived without it. The uh, uh, acoustic the acoustic. stuff. Of... It could have been shorter. I did. That's yeah. For sure. So it was that. It was just very long. It felt like it. Um. It, it could have been th- like twenty five like bit... seconds. Yeah, and I felt as as a song. If you're gonna write, you know, a long epic song, it's like. I don't know. It, there has to be fucking magic sauce in it, and I feel this this one for me just didn't really have like the sauce, and it felt a bit like weird at times, just like the order in which the riffs were in, and it didn't really move a like it didn't really move well. I thought, but um, who knows? Because in a month, I might say, "Oh my god, it's the greatest fucking Anthrax song ever." So I don't know. But for right now, that's how I kind of feel about it. Yeah, I mean. Right. Uh, do you guys know what ADI stands for? Anthrax oh. Dick Inspector. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no way. Uh, no fucking way. Um, I'm trying to search up what the fuck it is. Well, yeah, uh, I'll tell you. An- okay. Analog Device hang Incorp. I'll Incorp- tell you. No, hang on. Not. I'll tell you. According to songfacts.com, which is the majority of the research I did for this episode. I just went onto that one site. <laughs> I'm just like, oh, this is cool. Copy paste. So, sorry, songfacts.com. But according to them, it stands for Arabian Douche Intro. Wow, that will not fly today. What okay. the fuck? Arabian it's because of the, the vibe of the acoustic. Yeah, and they it didn't even sound Arabic. They what describe the it yeah, as yeah, it's true. They describe it as acoustic Middle Eastern guitar intro. Um, I didn't. I didn't feel that vibe honestly. So I don't. I didn't feel that it's vibe not, either. Yeah. So I, I think just because they use some weird chord, and then they're like, "Oh, it's Middle Eastern." <laughs> Dude, I feel like a lot of bands do that, where they play some weird ominous chord, and they're just like. Yeah, this sounds like uh, this sounds like uh, a Muslim band or some shit. I don't know. Dude, like <laughs> Arabian douche intro? Is that actually this, what it's? This like? sounds like that's, that's, <laughs> Dude, according to that like, website. That's backstory that's about the song that. And the, I don't know. That's fucked. You know what's really stupid about this song? And like, it's really like you go from Arabian douche intro slash the horror, the horror of it all, and apparently. From that website, uh, they had uh, this is like a tribute to Cliff Burton. So in what way? Yeah, how is the horror of it all a tribute to Cliff? Because it I, sounds like it's talking about the horrors uh, and stresses of life. Yeah, okay, like yeah. I couldn't tell you, uh, but this song, uh, because this album came out six months after his passing, uh, they I guess wrote this tribute song for him or they dedicated it to him i'm not too yeah. sure but from that website of what like the quick research that i did like that's that that's what it said so I was oh like, okay, no yeah. is it okay, saying no, the album never... that you're holding actually no i that's what that's what i understood from the lyrics but he does make some points of it pretend like scrap that whole fucking part out like i was talking out my ass it seems but it does say it's just too damn easy to die in this life. Who's making decisions? Tell me who's got it. Who's got the right? I mean, I think that's referring to like how that little, the bit of black ice there was, just fucking changed the whole course exactly of yeah. Metallica's history with you know Cliff Cliff unfor- unfortunately dying. And then he says, um, "This year I feel like is um, uh, pretty touching lyrics." When when someone's taken from you, what can you do or say? My hatred turns to violence. It's time to say goodbye. It's an honor. Memories, nothing harder. Like I do, that there that that is a very um, yeah. A, 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 there there are a very uh, heartfelt lyrics, so I do yeah. see that. Mm. Uh, can, can you edit out me talking about horrors of life? Because I that's what I understood. Just 
I feel stupid for saying that now. We'll, we'll, we'll look back at the footage and then we'll make it this we'll Yeah, afterwards. like, I'm sure it's not even that bad. Then. No, I'm sure, I'm sure it's fine, Justin. But Yeah, well, I feel stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Don't feel stupid, man. We're, we're all just trying. <laughs> I felt stupid when I didn't know how to fucking answer the question of the drum thing, and I felt like I should know that. So, there you go. <laughs> but, uh... So yeah, I feel like we're, we're done with this song. So let's uh, let's just wrap it up with uh, "Imitation of Life." Sounds like death. This song sounds like death. And then we'll give our Wait. final thoughts. Score out of ten. And uh, what do you it mean up. it sounds? What do you mean this sounds like death? No, like this song reminds me of the band Death a little bit. In what way? There's like... these two guitar parts, and it's like a harmony that I hear on like all the Death albums. It, uh, I mean, is it the I beginning mean, like, part I don't know. or the slower part? Oh, I don't, I don't remember exactly. But in my oh, notes, okay. I put uh, there was like not a lead part, but it was like two guitars at once, and and it, and it was like the intervals between the notes sounded like something I heard on like just like all of the Death <laughs> albums. But I, but I, other than that, it's uh, once again I put this is a fast butt chugger. <laughs> Is that a yeah. good thing then, or is yes, that a... yes, 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 yes. That's like a really I know, good thing. Diego, you said that this was like the two last songs, the yeah. one we just reviewed, and this one are the are some of the weakest for you. Yeah, I mean, for for me, I just like... kicked my laptop. Fuck. Are you, is I'm it just... okay? You could. <laughs> yeah, I was just laying back, and my foot just hit it, and it just went <laughs> whoop, and I was like, oh my fucking god. Well, good thing it didn't. Fall. I just did it. I just did it again. I just <laughs> Oh my god! All right, what what I was I was gonna say when <laughs> like that? I fucking yo, he does this, he does this really <laughs> shitty vocal and he goes, <laughs> and it's just like it's it like sounds, I was like I fucked with it. I don't know. I was sounds, like, Joe, what are yeah. you doing? <laughs> it sounds like he stubbed his toe, and he's just like, oh, oh my fucking toe hurts. Dude, I thought that that legit was like the one vocal melody that I hated was just that one part. Yeah. I was just like, what the fuck? Yeah. There's so many what the fuck moments in this song, especially the guitar solo. In this song, I just didn't vibe with it at all. I was like, really? Yeah. No way. Me, I loved it. It just, it just felt off. I don't know why. Dude, I thought it was like, I felt like it was the best solo i thought i love the shredding and how fast and the blue, 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 like sound st- tonality to it i i really fucking <laughs> i feel and... like yeah sorry just just to rephrase uh like the solo itself is good but within the context of the song i feel like it's not good so just in what way clarify. what do you mean like it feels like it sh- i felt like he just went into the studio Oh fuck! I don't know what to play, and then just fucking did all his techniques in one go, and like that was it. That that's what it felt like to me. Dude, my what my favorite one of my favorite riffs is from this song, and it's the beginning part, the very slow part. I mean, it yeah. does remind me of quite a bit of like New York hardcore that that I do listen to. Like I guess, like I said, Incendiary and and whatnot. Like I, that was one of my favorite points. I fucking love that. And then I loved how it switched to just the pure fucking thrash part. I felt yeah. like I felt like the transitions. Like I already said this, but the transitions are really well done, mm. in my opinion. Yeah. Yeah. That after. Now this good. one, this one I felt like there's two ways I like an album to end. It's kind of like I like the big grand atmospheric stuff, or like <laughs> if you're gonna do that, give me just. If you're not gonna do that, give me just pure balls to the fucking wall and make it, and make it, it, uh, and make it just sound amazing. And the drums here, I feel like, are some of the most relentless, and the bass keeps up with the drums perfectly. I yeah. find. Yeah, John, do you want to mm-hmm. add anything? I know you didn't get it. No, I, I think. Um, I mean, it's not the one of the better songs on the album. I, I think it's like an all right song. I enjoyed it. Did you find uh, it was like a, a filler track? I don't know. It's almost it's like on the borderline of being a filler song, song, but I think there's too many. There's like some good parts to it where I wouldn't consider it 
a filler song at all. What's what's the one song you guys would consider it uh, would consider a filler track? Skeletons for me. Really? I yeah. would put the the horror of it all as a filler for me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I feel that for me too. it's skeletons. I feel if, they, if for me personally if they remove skeletons this would get like a way higher rating. All right, let's yeah. uh with that uh let's segue into our final thoughts. Ratings. <laughs> That's that's supposed to be an F. Um, F, F. Anyway, F for like, what? F. Fucking butt chuggers. What letter? A, what up, butt chuggers? Check out the butt chugger merch. W. <laughs> that's not a W. Right. Whatever. <laughs> you fucking... uh, are you trying? To... I can't see what, what your camera, but like, are you trying to do like sign language or? No, not sign language. Well, dude, I can't, I can't see his camera, so to me, like, oh, I can't see. Okay, okay. So yeah, to me, could. I got no clue what he's you doing. Could. We're just doing like hand sign yeah. signs. Yeah. Hand because hand I, hand. I actually, I actually do know, like, from a paper I read, like, uh, at least what the paper said, like American sign language. Anyways, so, wait. But uh, let's uh, final. Thoughts. Wait, 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 okay, wait, sorry. wait, wait. Before that, stay. Say a bad word in sign language, and and I'll try to guess what no, it is. No, I mean just I know the letters. I don't know. I don't uh, know actual. Yeah. I can't do like. Bad word in sign I feel. I feel like if you say "fuck you" to someone in sign language, it's the universal yeah, this. Like, like you really need to do imagine this. Imagine if it's like say. a five second thing. <laughs> you five can second, spell it out. He, <laughs> and then the then the person just looks back at you and just does, and walks away, <laughs> and, and they're just like, "Well, that was a little more effective." Fuck. All right. Um, all right. Stupid. All right, guys. Sorry. So let's right. talk about just overall the score and our favorite tracks. From yeah. yeah. I'll I'll let uh, I'll let someone go first. Okay, John, you go first. All right, all right. So overall, the production on this compared to Ride is fucking miles better. Yeah. Miles, mm-hmm. like it's just a lot better. I mean, it came out three years after around, so um, I guess I, maybe that has to do with it. Uh, I don't know. It's fucking good. I just. Everything's tight, like a fucking, like, the tightest butthole in the world. So, um... Okay, so number three... <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, so number three, I'm going with I'm the... <laughs> number two, Caught in a Mosh. <laughs> and number one, I'm going, uh... I'm gonna have to go with... Nice fucking life. Nice uh, fucking life. And... Yeah, nice That's effing... Nice effing life. Uh, nice that one's your life. favorite? Yeah. Yeah, all right. And what and, would you give this uh, score? Oh, sorry. Least no, favorite and song then too. and then my least favorite song probably be the really long one with ADI slash horror. Let's put in more riffs. Like, let's just make this song yes. 10 minutes. <laughs> my least favorite slash song, Ar- Arabic. My least favorite song, Arabic douche intro. <laughs> Imagine if that's like <laughs> someone's favorite song. Sorry. <laughs> it's, it's not even horrors of it all or both of them. It's just my favorite song was Arabic Juice <laughs> intro. The the one minute fucking intro. Yeah. <laughs> What's out of but, time, John? Uh, final score. This is the highest score I've given to an album on this show. I'm I am giving this record a fucking nine on ten. Wow. I, it's almost perfect. Just well, that's sweet. Um alright. Uh if I can just give like a little final I do. I do feel like what Anthrax has is a lot, a lot of, uh, a lot of un- underrated magic, and I feel like the chemistry be- between the band is really tight, and how they mix thrash and uh, th- thrash and, and hardcore. I feel like they're one of the innovators of crossover. Don't quote me on that, but they, at least in crossover, I can see how they can be a huge influence. Yeah. Um there was a few flaws but overall I thought this was a really tight album and like John said I f- I thought this was better than than Ride the Lightning. And it's not even they don't even do anything like super grand. It's just the overall chemistry and balls to wall fun all the way through uh playing that that just makes this album so much more enjoyable. Favorite songs uh, t- 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 I'm gonna have to say. Uh, oh fuck. Okay. You'd have to think because I don't know. For me, for me, it's between like the first song you can think of is 
uh, among the, among the living or imitation of life. Uh, I'm gonna say, oh fuck, if I had to pick, I'm gonna say among the living. Um, as as uh, which which one one? I'm gonna say three. Three, okay, three. Three, three, three um, okay. yeah, among the living. Number two would have to be one world, and number one would have to be I am the law. I am the law, dude. That that's just such a classic. But I do also think yeah. imita- imitation of life was a huge highlight for me. Overall, um, I mean, I did praise this album like quite a bit, but I would give it like an eight. I just I don't I perf- I personally don't feel it, it it can go any higher. Just not because the flaws are really are really holding it back but i just feel it's not at that level but it is an amazing album if you like thrash metal give anthrax a, a chance there you go <laughs> yeah. your turn dig uh for me this album the whole album again the formula of just the backing vocals and the lead vocalist like the chemistry and the formula that they use for every song for almost every song is uh, it's just it works right if you listen to an anthrax song just on its own like you're you're cooking like you're good you know and mm. uh, again the production super professional and these are like songs that almost anyone can enjoy because they're unlike other bands where it's like all like you know like all that shit so if somebody that's new to metal that's just finding out this is a good starter band to start off with it's a good band to transition you into the more heavier shit if you're into that. So, uh, with that being said, I feel like uh, this is definitely underrated. Anthrax is super underrated. We said that at the beginning of the show. We're saying it again because it's it's just true compared to the other, uh, uh, the rest of the big four. You know, they they their songs are just they're more popular and they're more diverse whereas anthrax songs you know they have that formula of just the shouting and the the lead vocal part uh, at least for the 80s stuff yes, i know like least. later on they do change for a bit okay well i haven't listened to that stuff so i wouldn't know no no but, but... i'm just i'm just saying like at least for the 80s stuff they do definitely follow okay. that that sort okay well that's uh, that's good to know um yeah. What, uh, when I was listening to album reviews of what people were saying, uh, one guy really summed it up perfectly. He said that, uh, it's, uh, hang on, I wrote his channel down. Uh, it's Randy, Randy Joe on YouTube. <laughs> so, Randy Joe, he Randy. basically, yeah, he basically said that Anthrax were being too consistent throughout the whole album, and by the end, your brain <laughs> just feels like mush, right? And that's, that's what I said before. Yeah. Uh, I was just re- uh, repeating what he what he said, and uh, basically it becomes like the wall of sound that every instrument is doing their own thing, and I I have to agree with that. That's it's exactly how I felt when I was listening to this album uh, for the first time too. Uh, so that's basically it. And the f- final score, uh, the three favorite songs, caught caught in a mosh, NFL, and uh, Law. Top three, uh, go in order one through three like that. And then the least favorite uh, would have to be horror. And uh, mm. out of ten, well, what do you guys think I did? Oh, yeah, because you do your fucking mathematician. Is... Yeah. Um. Hold on. You li- you liked Among the Living, Con the Mosh, I'm the Law, NFL, Skeletons. You like quite a bit. Indians. I feel like Open World. You were kind of iffy on. I'm gonna say I'm gonna say you gave it like an eight. John. An eight point three. No, John's Justin, gonna win this. No, Justin wins because oh. closer. I gave it a seven point five 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 six. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, I just um, so if you round it up, it's an eight. Yeah. Yeah. I I I I gave it a very high score because I think the songs are there, but not only that. For this year, in terms like this mix, the mix on this album, I fucking love it. Yeah, like yeah, I listened to, I li- I was listening to this album on my fucking beats and although they're very bass heavy i have to say it sounded so fucking balls out man i was just like so blown away sounds full Mm -hmm. right oh yeah 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 i was like for 87 like like a lot of these like hard and heavy rock bands they just sounded like fucking dick 
but and uh, I, I, I it sounded like, great. I feel like it's not a lot of like a lot of the hard eighties hardcore bands, hardcore punk bands, where they just said like it's like well, I can distinguish what is what, but it's just like it's there. Like I can hear everything properly, but it just sounds like messy. I feel like they they take that where it's like okay. You could hear this, you could hear this, you could hear this, but you could hear this, but it doesn't sound muffled. The yeah, production no. si- the production sounds clean but gritty at the same time. This should be an influential album production wise, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And all that's right. about all that's, I can that's say about for it. All right. Yeah. Thanks for watching The Hammer. I got a fast round question. All right. All right. How how's how's everybody's uh dating life? A dating What's, life. What's uh, going on here, guys? Does anyone have any facts? Um, you, 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 you can call my dating life Kurt Cobain because it's no longer existing. Uh, <laughs> fucking ass, I almost fucking spit it out. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that your camera, I could see your camera just to see you do that. Kurt's on an island right now playing golf with fucking Jimmy, Jimmy. Hendrix. And Everyone Robert in the 27 and Club. Yeah. They're just playing golf, bro. <laughs> With Tupac, I, I'd just love to see that. Right now. Okay, hang on. Uh, uh, Justin, I can't believe you fucking went all this time without seeing my fucking camera. I, I would have thought you would have pulled up like the Twitch stream, like on your phone or something, just to like see. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna like leave and then. Come no, back. I'll, I'll, I'll leave and I'll come back on. Hold on. Okay. Twice in a row. Twice in a row, this guy fucking leaves. Twice in a row. No, yo, look at the, look at the layout. <laughs> oh, okay, you're gonna see the recording. It's just fucked up. <laughs> okay, no, I, I, I see you now. All you right, and your cool. beautiful shaved head. Bro, you legit look like Sid from Toy Story now. People oh, always God. said that about me. <laughs> you're the new Sid. Sid, Scott Sid. Ian I with need us. a fucking skull. <laughs> no. Dude, and John, you legit look like Dave Mustaine. <laughs> Dave Mustaine's here. Dave Mustard say no. Italian Dave Mustaine. <laughs> Oh, guys, check this out. Check this out. Guess this fucking Megadeth song. Hey, me, meet my ass. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not even playing it right. Anyway. I, f- I feel like I look like the drummer of Autopsy, almost. I don't know what that is, so... Uh, well, you could add a picture later on. <laughs> they're from here, right? Eh? From what? They're, uh... A band in Montreal, I'm pretty sure. No, they're uh, they're from uh, Cali. Oh, okay. Then I'm actually, thinking... no, I I don't I don't even look like him. You know what? Cut everything I'm saying. I'm too stupid. <laughs> no, <laughs> band. No, but stays goes. No. Was cryptopsy? Is it cryptopsy? No, autopsy. I, mean. I said it. autopsy. Cryptopsy. Yeah. From sorry. Yeah. 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 Uh, but getting back to like just the like, the fast rounds. I mean. No, uh, lo- love life. No dating. Is no dates. Down, down the toilet. I've just, oh, dude, it's to the point where I haven't used Tinder in so long that Good. it logged me out and it sent me a security code just so I can log back in. That's how much I oh, was just shit. not using it yeah. for. And it's just, I'm gonna be honest, man. Um, it's it sucks not being in a relationship. I fucking hate it. Right. I don't know. Let there's me, like uh... a lot of positives to it. There's just positives to it, man. Like, do you feel like you need to be in a relationship to be happy? Because, like, it shouldn't be that way, man. Like, it really shouldn't. Uh, it, br- it brought it brought new meaning into my life. I feel like that's... Cause right it, now... it, did, it, did, it did give me more... Because my... Me, personally, I mean, you guys know me. I like making people happy and smile and... I feel like that brought like a new aspect to my life, and it's just so kind of yes and no to like to what you're saying. Yes, yeah. in the sense that it did bring me, uh, it did bring me a new purpose and it fulfilled me more. But it also it's because I wanted it, not because I needed it, craved it. So I a bit yes, a bit no. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I mean that's uh that's the point. I mean nobody wants to be alone, right? I mean no, it's torture, uh, man. Yeah. Like, I have kind of, like, feel, I guess, the same way, but for me, especially right now in, like, the climate that we're in with fucking COVID, I feel like now is, like, not the time to be meeting people, like, yeah. especially now. Especially, like, with, 
especially with with because in Quebec, you know, we have our our curfew. It's being lifted to nine thirty p.m. Thankfully, but not by much. I mean, I I can't even I can't even see people properly like as much as I want to because of this curfew. So you are right. I mean, especially with Corona going around, thankfully the vaccines are coming more and more. Did you guys hear apparently 18 and over, we should be getting soon. Yeah, uh, May 14. We should be. May 14. Yeah, so, yeah. I'm, def- I'm definitely going to get mine, yes. but just with, with everything uh, going around, you are right. It's, it's not the perfect time for it. Yeah, it's just not a uh... Like for me, I guess like personally, like a dating life, like it, it's non existent. Like just it's a, like fucking that class. Like I can't, I can't fucking repeat the joke because it's not funny anymore. If I repeat it, but what it's like copy paste of that. Well, my my Kurt Cobain joke. Yeah, it's just a yeah. fucking copy paste, bro. Like, uh, and for me, I guess personally, like I've been dealing, like I've been battling myself like a lot of just. Okay, do I really want a fucking relationship now? Like, no. Like, I, I don't... I feel it's not like... Working. Also, I feel like it would be, like, way too much work for me, man. Like... You have to go through the headache of everything again. Uh, yeah. Edit everything again. You have to fucking relearn the person. Always be there for them. Deal with their shit. And, like, I, I don't want to do that right now. Like, I don't have the capacity. I don't have the mental space to deal with somebody else's problem like i already have enough shit going on in my head that like i don't really like share a lot because it's like personal shit but uh yeah you know just... if, if if anything you could share it with us we'll, we'll yeah. always be here for you Mike. i know i know you guys are but uh yeah and i definitely will but i just i feel like you're always trying to win the other person over even when you're in a relationship i feel like I don't know, like, it's never good enough to just be in a relationship and be comfortable. You always have to try to, you know, do something fun, keep it spicy, because or else the flame goes out or whatever. You always have to, like, oh, do a yeah. surprise get, you always have to always win their love every day. And, like, to me, I'm like, I fucking think about that, and I think about it as this daunting fucking task that, like, Bro, I'm never gonna yeah. be able to do that. Like, I feel like I'm never gonna be able to do that because I'm just fucking. It's so overwhelming to me that concept of just every day. Oh my god, I have to fucking get this person's approval. Of uh, okay, are you still? Are you still there? Like, is it still the same? Yeah. Because it's even fucking when gradual. In your life. <laughs> like it's gradual. Like the the oh, I'm losing interest and in you. You're not like this anymore. You wanna know what? I don't know. I- if I ever sense that, if I'm talking to someone, like if, if I sense that they're going to act like that, I just, it's just like, don't even put in don't the time. Bother. Don't even fucking bother with that bullshit. Right. Are, are it's you... like, fuck that. Fuck that. Like they have a lot to fucking learn. It doesn't matter. Are you, are you seeing anyone, John? I was going no, for you. No, no, <laughs> no. Okay. No, yeah. one. no there, way. I don't watch there, To me, there are like obviously positive facts to being uh, single. like single I mean you got you got more time for you like you said Diego you don't gotta worry about about this headache of I gotta still even if this person's still in my circle I still gotta make sure they're never gonna that I, I gotta make sure that they don't they don't say to themselves man I really wanna leave it's always just like it's a huge battle so you at least don't get this headache but no, I I do I do miss uh, being able to hug and kiss someone for yeah. sure. Yeah, definitely. Come here, come here, baby. Let's get it spicy. <laughs> yeah. We just start to like lick the webcam. Yo, yo, what the fuck? Here, I'll, I'll lick the webcam. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> no. Oh, no. no. It's classic. Did you actually lick it? Oh, yeah, God. because you were waiting. Fuck. Uh, yeah. Dude, I mean, yeah. I mean, just to just to finish it off, like that that like the topic. I mean, you look at a couple that's like seventy years old, right? And you can tell that like they're committed to each other and 
divorce it wasn't even a thought back then. You know, it was like, okay, we're getting married. That's it. You know, a lot and, less looked. Oh, no, it's it, such a it different is, time now. It's, it's looked down upon compared to nowadays. Yeah, nowadays. Nowadays, it's like, oh, you have options. You know, nowadays, uh, uh oh, if, if they don't treat you like royalty, uh, you know, dump their ass, man. They're, you gotta, there's somebody else that's out there for you. And then, like, like people realize that, and the divorce rate goes up. You know, everything. Like, yeah, exactly. I think our generation, like, when we get, like, I feel like nobody's gonna fucking be married, and everybody's gonna have three fucking people that they got married to, and then they divorce, and they're like some. Like, I feel like it's just gonna be this like weird fucking like fucking cesspool of just like people. Single. Dude, in Japan, uh, yeah, I don't know if it's still just, like, a problem a now. Anymore. In Japan, I don't know if it's still a problem now, but they, I'll. Just in case it's not a problem now, I'll just say in the past, it was to a point where like they were, they like there was a lot of fucking just single men out there that just like more like people are starting to get worried that maybe population might go down or whatever. Which I mean, we're overcrowded on Earth and resources getting drained, so not big deal. But I don't think, I truly don't think anyone, unless you're a hermit. I don't think anyone wants to be lonely. Uh, do you feel like commitment is like a big problem for you guys? Like it's just no. Like, for me, it's, no. It's, it's for not an issue. Other, yeah, for the other person, I feel like it's hard to find somebody that's as loyal as you, and you're trying to like always make it work. You know, no matter what, you go through the fucking trenches with them, and you you always you try to fight for it you know but if you're both fighting you're always arguing and then it's becoming not healthy and it's like a year that you guys are fucking going through that then obviously it's you break up because it doesn't work but yeah if like yeah if it's like just like for like i don't know like three months four months of you're just arguing but like you fight for the other person okay what what actions are you gonna do to try to make it better okay i'm gonna do this this and this and you're gonna see there's gonna be a change and then over time, oh, you call that person out on their mistakes. Oh, remember, we talked about this. Oh, yeah, okay. And then you improve over time. And that's, you, you have to talk, of, like, with your partner yeah. about how, like, you're feeling. And for me, like, I have a, I have a hard time, like, expressing what the fuck I'm thinking. And I don't always use the right words. And I feel like I need to fucking solve that issue before I, like, even think about dating again because it's you think you think it's like a, a therapy type thing or it's just like oh, trying to trying to get oh okay okay i don't know to me it's kind of i kind of just there's a song i don't know if you know it it's by jesse riaz it's called before before love. before before love came to kill us by uh jesse riaz really good r&b song mm. and there's there's a fucking lyric in there that just it kind of gives me chills every single fucking time. I feel like this is this is why I asked like the commitment thing because I'm just like I'll read you the lyric where it says um I know nobody gets out of love alive. We either break up when we're young or say goodbye when we die. Like I feel like to me it's just the breaking us <laughs> nothing <laughs> more weird time to fucking rock a red. It's just to me it's kind of like break you know when you break up when you're young it's like i don't want to have to go through fucking heartbreak again but at the same time i do want to grow old w with someone but it would fucking hurt to see a loved one die so for me it's kind of like it's it's a little bit of a battle of like do i want to do i want to go through this again and yeah and have the, all the headaches and the fights while at the same time do I want to just grow old with someone and then have one day just be taken? Like, that's like, I have like a huge fear of death. And it's like, it's, I think for the human conscious, it is a hard thing to fucking fathom. Like, even to this day, when I watched, yeah. I mean, I watched my fucking grandfather get unplugged from oh, uh, intens the intensive care unit. It's still to this day, I'm, I'm still expect to see him whenever I go to my nona's house. And it's just, yeah. it's such a weird fucking thing. So that's yeah. like my big thing yeah. with relationships. It's like one one way or another I'm gonna get fucking burned. So do I do I wanna do I wanna go through through it and experience all that? And it's, thanks and thankfully for right right now.
thankfully it is i do want to get to experience that and get that far in that but it's just that always that is always something in back of my mind where it's like oh yeah i'm gonna get burnt one day whether like 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 uh jesse said you know you know either break up when we're young and you have to, and i mean we've all been through relationships we know all the problems do we really want to go through that or we say goodbye when we die like that's that would be the hardest day for me for sure so it's always just a balance between that. Damn, that got I fucking feel, dark. Like <laughs> yeah, but I feel like it's, a, it's about the journey, right? Like, that that's what life is. Life is it's about the journey and what you do. Do you want to have all these experiences or do you just want to be alone and fucking die alone? You know, to me, that that's what scares yeah. the fuck out of me. Dying alone and you don't have anybody. You don't have any kids to fucking you know, know. take care of you or like anything like that and you don't have like any siblings or if you're an only child like that like that shit like scares the fuck out of me yeah but, i feel and, bad for people that go through that yeah. like but there's just to yeah. uh, just to finish up here like again like, it's about the journey man like you gotta like go through all that shit you gotta go through the arguments you gotta go through the good times the bad times you know for there to be good times there has to be bad times because that's just, just how it is. Unfortunately, yeah. yeah. And before, you know, you get into a relationship, you got to make sure your glass is full and then their glass is full and then you just come together and you just sit next to each other. You don't pour... Well, you can pour some shit because in certain days, your levels are going to be a bit empty, their levels are going to be a bit high and then you share that energy going back and forth. But most of the time, you're growing as two separate individuals together you know it's never yeah. it can't be too one-sided as well the relationship so there's, no, there's you have to be, it's, you have you have to be a support for each yeah. other that's how yeah. you teamwork makes a dream work exactly. guys i thought of um a poem i just thought of a poem that i'd like to read with the mic close to my mouth <laughs> okay, and i have yes. like Hang on. Uh, before, a before, before you do that i just want to say nobody wants to die alone in isolation so fucking Let's get through this fucking pandemic. Let's get fucking fix our shit in our brains. Let's fucking do it. All right. Yeah. Get don't pussy. Yeah. I'm kidding. <laughs> don't. I don't mean it. I don't mean it like that. All right, guys. Here's a poem. This is called. Uh... Hi, I'm I'm John Mateo, and I'm doing poetry. All right. Love is a fifty-fifty gamble. It's either you make it out together. Or you break up. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> That's a great note to add. Or, <laughs> or uh, as they as they as they do in the in the poetry clubs, you gotta stop the fingers. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Yeah. Do you want? There, there was one. Uh, just because this, we need to fucking lighten up this topic. I don't want to fucking cry on stream. Yeah. Um, yeah. Another fast ones that I fast yeah. uh, round question. I really like worst thrash band in your opinion. I really I thought like no, 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 bro, <laughs> we just you gave this a nine. <laughs> no, what do you mean? I'm kidding. <laughs> bro, I don't even worst. have that written down. I have fucking Scott Ian, the Gandhi of metal. I've been a rap metal or cringe TikToker. Have you ever been in a fight? And dumbest thing you have <laughs> did in public. That's what I have ready. <laughs> oh fuck! I that was in the intro. My mistake. My yeah. mistake. I'll let I'll let John choose the question. You, I don't care. You want to do okay. the the uh, a fight or the dumbest thing you ever okay. did? In- I got before. Okay, this has to be an actual fast round. This can't be a slow round because okay, we got like yeah, five yeah, minutes true. left. So okay, okay. fuck. Actual fast round. So let's do. Uh, I think cringe TikToker or rap metal would be good. What do you guys? Think? All right, all right. What 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 is I the question rather... for? The question is: Would you rather? Be in a, a rap metal band or be a TikToker. That oh my really fucking god! <laughs> uh, I'll go first. I think I'm gonna have to uh, do the TikTok because because I'm not doing rap metal. Yeah, I have to agree. I'm on TikTok side. <sighs> Here's the thing, though. It doesn't say you have to be the vocalist of the rap metal band. 
No, no, no. Let's uh, just assume. Let's just assume you gotta be the voice. Wait, so are you saying? Are you saying like be the front man? Like be the Fred Durst yeah, of yeah. a fucking band? Oh my yeah, fucking yeah, god, that John! Kind of raises the stake. Come on, you're raising the stake. <laughs> oh fuck! I thought I found a loophole only for it to get sealed. Uh, <laughs> No, because then it's not fair, right? Because then, because then you have to pick the rap. Oh, you gotta fuck. Be the face, right? <laughs> oh, my God. Be, like, all the magazines. Bro, like. The new Durst? <laughs> what? <laughs> the new Durst. Justin Durst. The next upcoming Durst. Fred Aquino. Fred Lord Aquino. Of Worms. <laughs> Dude, uh. Oh, fuck. Oh, this is the slowest fast round of the fastest slowest round. This is the most painful question, dude. Dude, honestly, uh, every fucking SoundCloud rapper that I fucking know personally is just not fucking good, and there's no good rap metal bands. I can't dance for shit, so I'd be a horrible famous TikToker, but I'd probably be one of those like comedy ones. So I'd have to say, cr- no, but I have to be cringy though. Like, what the fuck? My whole life is a cringe fest. So fuck it, TikTok it is. <laughs> exactly. That that was my point right. in my head. Oh was, my god. Yeah. When I was choosing, I was like, "Well, I'm already fucking cringe, so I'll fucking just put it on TikTok." Dude, my life is like one fucking embarrassment after the deck, so I might as well do TikTok. Yeah. Dude, cause think about it. There are no good rap metal bands. Nah. You can't name me one. Nah. It's not Hollywood Undead. God knows it's not Hollywood Undead. It ain't Limp Biscuit. Unless, you what? Um, unless you're metal. fucking Anthony Vincent doing 10 second song covers of like actual rap metal, like that's the only thing that's good, in my opinion. And even then, you can you you couldn't do a whole fucking song of that. It'd be too much. Oh my god. Uh, um, what, what about you? What was your reasoning behind choosing a TikTok? <laughs> oh well, just because I I I never want in a rap metal. Oh, John, Never. You, you're cutting I'd out. rather be. You cut out. Yeah, I cut out. Am I back? <laughs> you're brushing Am against his hair. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I would never ever want to be in a rap metal band. I think it's the most embarrassing thing I've ever heard in my fucking life. I'd you rather be a cringe TikToker and make this and just make. You, you know, it's 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 like really bad, but I think I'd rather be um, a TikToker. Then have to rap, dude. There was um, at one point, it's like every fucking band on Instagram they'll follow you, and then as soon as you follow them, they'll unfollow you just so, and they'll be like, "Yes, I gained a follower, and I didn't have oh, to yeah. do anything." Inst- like, in inst- a lot of the Instagram bands are fucking hilarious, dude. If this one, if you ever need to laugh at something, just go on like these Instagram band pages. Dude, this Instagram band page that just followed me thinking I'd follow them back without, like, checking them out first. Dude, it was, like, a rap metal band, but they mix, like, trap rap. Oh, wait, who? Like, who is it? Dude, I don't know, and I'm so glad okay, I didn't okay. look more into it because I listened to one song. This this band was just playing very shitty. And this, this guy was holding a bottle, and he's like, Hey, yo, I got a cock in my ass. I smoke grass. And it's just like, I'm like, bro, I, I I immediately backed out and I was like, yeah, I ain't dealing with that fucking headache. He's like, hey, put uh, this uh, in the garage. Oh, my God. Yo, 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 part of the house. And they unfollowed me because, almost instantaneously because I didn't follow them back. And I'm like, buddy. Yeah. I ain't fucking supporting this bullshit. Oh, All right, I this remember... Is- on my on like my Instagram a few months ago, this <laughs> random band from Ontario just liked all my posts, <laughs> and they didn't follow me. So I was like, okay, like I was like, I fuck you guys too. Like I'm not following you. Like what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, that's so weird. Oh my god, dude! But how how could you actually explain to your friends I'm in a rap metal band without fucking cringing without having your teeth cringe so hard they just shatter <laughs> <laughs> like seriously <laughs> i don't know man but i'm in a rap metal band yo uh, do you guys have any uh anything you else you want to say before we end i mean if this is the end personally i don't have anything to say other than i love john's uh robot dancing 
Thank you. Will Smith, I am robot. Uh, here, here's also another note for you to realize. <laughs> I went through more than fifty percent of this podcast without seeing Diego's face. That's true. Yo, that's that's a fucking <laughs> but... Guinness World Record. <laughs> most stu- most stupid decision to not just instantly say back out and go yeah. back in for more than an hour. Well, you live and you learn. I think I feel like that's uh. That's a good. That's my final thing. You live and you learn. That's this whole podcast. We we improve <laughs> one week at a time. Look at this, we got a fucking layout this week, man. Hey. So regarding next week podcast, um, we're not actually gonna do an album review. We're just gonna do topics. I think it would just improve our communication skills. The week after that, um. I remember Diego saying we might go on a little one week hiatus just so we can divide divide our clips and um Yeah, just to edit a bit uh, more. Alright, let's wrap it up. Let's wrap it up. Good night. Be like, all right. All right, thanks guys for coming. <laughs> yeah, I take myself seriously. Anyone that might be watching in the future, uh thank you. Your support means everything. <laughs> All right, sweet dreams. Sweet dreams. Sweet dreams. And good night. Sweet right. dreams and good night, Thrashers. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> Making battery acid. Battery acid. Sweet dreams and good night. <laughs>